each other. And they cause vibration or waves. So as point C causes an infinite number of vibrations in a finite moment, an immense amount of energy is created. In our physicist language, this would be called the Big Bang Theory. The cosmos exploded into existence when totalness and nothingness came into bond. And the distortions that come out of that or the waves causes energy. And the energy compacts itself together or concentrates itself to form itself into matter, what we know as matter. This is exactly the opposite of what a nuclear explosion would be, where you would take the matter and you would reverse the process and it would turn back into energy. And so the planets come into existence the condensing of the energy that comes out of point C as nothingness and totalness come into bond an infinite number of times in a finite moment. Now you would say to me, well, how does God get involved in this? How does God come from this? The subtle energies that are generated out of the explosion at point C form all forms of distortions. And these energies, we know of them as being as intelligence. This intelligence forms itself in, an, in a manner where it allows things to form in a grand design. And the grand design is 1.618, or this ratio that everything in nature is manufactured on. The sunflower grows on it. Rabbits multiply on it. The stars are in distances apart on this formula. The elements and the molecules within nature of matter are designed on this formula. This is the God of creation. This is the mathematics of creation. Everything came from this formula. Yes, all the gods do exist. All they are are personalities which are generated out of this formula. Question. Whom do we worship? The force or the personalities or whichever we choose? Whichever you choose. Everybody has a different need for worship. And to say somebody's worship is improper is improper for us to say that. For they have a need for that worship. I guess what I'm asking is do, do the some individuals worship that force? Or do they worship anyone? They are in unity with it. They're in harmony with it. They work with it. So to say worship would maybe be inappropriate. They work with it. It's like learning the rules. Exactly. Playing within the rules. Like if you were a young play. child and you went to a marble game and you saw all the big fellows playing marbles and you would see the one fellow who was knocking all the marbles out of the ring and you would worship him if you were a young boy. But if you grew older and you learned the rules of the game and you got in harmony with them and you could knock the marbles out of the game just as well as he could, then you would be in harmony or unity in the game, the game of creation or the game of marbles. And so there's nothing wrong with people in their evolutionary path worshiping different individuals. And the reason they're doing that is it's very necessary to do that in certain circumstances because to be able to become like something you have to worship it and once you become like it, it doesn't necessarily mean you'll continue to worship it you'll be in unity with it so what you're saying is the worship is really like submitting to it and allowing it to land on you and allow you to be with it so you can learn to understand it exactly Instead of fighting with it, or running from it, or ignoring it, or pretending that it doesn't exist. Doesn't that sequence of numbers have an end somewhere? It's irrational. It's a rational it answer. It has no end. It's infinite. Just like an infinite number of times, point C passes between A and B in a finite moment. 
It has a harmony to it. You can hear it within yourself. You can hear point C passing in and out of bond between nothingness and totalness. It's the moment that you're alive and the moment that you're dead. But it's so fast that you believe that there's a continuum going along all the time. It's like the electric light bulb up here goes on and off 60 times per second. And it looks like a solid beam of light coming out to our consciousness because the inability of our mind and his perception of seeing the flexation of it. But if you could take a picture of it with a high-speed camera and then slow it down, you'd see it going on and off, on and off, on and off. And point C creates this creation by the explosion that takes place between the bonding of the two. This is the same thing as sex. That's where sex came from. The bonding between some two different things. What makes it vibrate? Couldn't it bond the two together and sit still and still have something? Like super glue? Yeah. <laughs> That's a great analogy <laughs> like super glue. Um, what makes it um, break the bond? Because it fluctuates from nothing to totalness. The cosmos goes in and out of existence an infinite number of times in a finite moment. But we happen to be seeing the part that we believe is in existence because of the continuum mm -hmm. of it. It's like the light going on and off. But with direct current, doesn't the light simply burn? Yes. Yeah. But that's not direct current. So I guess our minds can't really conceive what the other side of the coin would be, nothing. The nothingness? Because we don't exist in the nothingness. Yes, we do. Well, well we go well, out of existence, yeah. We go out I, of existence, so I guess the reason why we can't see that is because we're not there, because we're not an entity when we're not here. Right, but I wouldn't get worried about it. <laughs> well, I'm trying to understand right. why, why, you know, you can't perceive uh -huh. the other. I mean, we know what the all is, and we know all the, we know the all pretty much. You may be able to perceive the nothingness from a state of consciousness, but maybe say not right now. Say when you're asleep. Uh huh. I know we do things while we're asleep, but when we wake up, we have no recall. Didn't we kind of touch on the nothingness there? Because say you wake up and that was just black. It's, you don't remember. It's it's an example of the fluxation. It's like when the sun comes up and there's light. The sun goes down and it's dark. You go. You're awake. You're asleep. You, there's totalness and there's nothingness. Everything has its opposites. It's all the opposites come from the totalness and and the nothingness. This is the grand opposites right here. The totalness and the nothingness. A front and a back side of a coin. An up and a down. A warm and a cold. An in and an out. A backwards and a forwards. A tall and a short. Just opposite of each other. This is the basis for all existence and all opposites. That's God. Everywhere but nowhere. Everywhere but nowhere. Exactly. There's not a lot of people that have been exposed to this yet, to this point in time. And I wouldn't ask you to say that it, you understand it completely or it's singing to you or talking to you. But the more you think about this and the more you look at it and you examine it in nature and you examine it in your life, it all of a sudden talks back to you and shows you why it is the creation. You may say, how is it possible for that piece of paper to talk back to me? It's not the paper, it's the concept that will talk back to you and it will show you why everything in existence came from it. Other questions?